Imagine a world where your thoughts aren't just your own, but a stream of data, readable, writable, and potentially hackable. This isn't a Black Mirror episode. It is the reality currently living inside the skull of Noland Arbaugh. Noland, Neuralink's first patient, calls his implant Eve. He uses it to play Mario Kart, study neuroscience, and browse the web, all without lifting a finger. But while the headlines cheer for the medical miracle, and it is a miracle, something much larger and more complex is brewing in the background. We are witnessing the start of an arms race that will redefine our species, and most people are completely missing the scale of what's coming next. Today, we aren't just talking about Elon Musk's latest gadget. We are dissecting the most critical convergence in human history, the moment our biological minds merge with digital intelligence. Let's dive in. The narrative you see in the mainstream media is about helping the paralyzed walk, but the real story is about geopolitics, cognitive supremacy, and the end of privacy as we know it. Right now, there is a three-way war for your brain. In one corner, you have Neuralink aggressively pushing the boundaries of invasive surgery, with plans to not just restore movement but to restore sight with their upcoming Blindsight project. In the second corner, you have Synchron, backed by heavyweights like Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates, betting on a minimally invasive stentrode that slides into the brain through the blood vessels. No open skull surgery required. And in the third corner, perhaps the most significant of all, is China. The Chinese government has just launched a state-backed blitz with their Beinao One chip, aiming to implant massive numbers of patients by next year. They have explicitly stated their goal is to lead the world in brain-computer interfaces by 2030. This is where the AI brain paradox begins. The technology is sold to us as a medical necessity, restoring dignity to those with spinal cord injuries, or ALS. And for patients like Noland, who is now seeking a second implant to potentially regain leg movement, this is life-changing. But we have to look at the long-term roadmap. Musk has been transparent about the endgame, cognitive augmentation. The goal is to increase the bandwidth of human communication so we can compete with artificial intelligence. The argument is that without a high-speed connection to the digital world, humans will become obsolete house cats to AI overlords. So the paradox is this, to save humanity from being replaced by machines, we must become machines. Let's play this out. If this technology succeeds, we move from restoration to enhancement. Imagine a world where a wealthy subset of the population can afford a tertiary digital cortex. They can download skills, process data at AI speeds, and communicate telepathically. This creates a great cognitive divide that makes our current wealth gap look like a minor rounding error. You would have a species split into the augmented and the naturals. How do you compete for a job against someone who has the entire internet integrated into their working memory? You can't. This forces a society where augmentation isn't a choice, but a requirement for survival. And then there is the nightmare of data sovereignty. Your brain data, your neural patterns, your emotional reactions, your deepest memories, is the final frontier of privacy. If China creates a state-subsidized BCI network, does the state own that data? If you use a Neuralink, does a corporation own your thoughts? We've already seen how social media algorithms manipulate our behavior just by watching our clicks. Imagine what they could do if they had direct access to your dopamine receptors, the potential for neuromarketing, or even worse, state-level thought surveillance is not just possible, it is the logical conclusion of the business model. This is one of the hardest topics I have ever covered on NuvaTech, because the benefits are so undeniable, yet the risks are existential. I look at Noland Arbaugh, and I see hope, resilience, and the best of human ingenuity. But then I look at the geopolitical roadmap, the rush for data supremacy, and I see a trap. We are walking toward a line in the sand where we have to decide if our internal mental space is something we are willing to commercialize. I want to know where you stand on this. If you could install a chip today that guaranteed you perfect memory and instant skill acquisition, 
but it meant giving a corporation access to your neural data, would you do it? Is the upgrade worth the loss of privacy? Let me know in the comments. I have a feeling this is going to be a heated debate. If you value these deep dives into the future that is rushing towards us, hit that like button and subscribe to Nuva Tech. We're going to keep tracking the story as it evolves, because frankly, I don't think we can afford to look away. Stay curious, stay critical, and I'll see you in the next one.